how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Uh, the book of Romans gives this beautiful, beautiful sentence. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Uh, I love missions because I am the fruit of missions. I was born in Bogota, Colombia uh, in the 81. Now, Colombia, as you may know, in the 80s and 90s, was definitely a place that you did not want to be in. It was a place that was rigged by violence, uh, drug lords who tried to control the country. Uh, we had car bombs going off, uh, we had kidnappings going on, and definitely a place that people did not want to be in. I believe the feet of those who share the good news are beautiful because some beautiful feet of missionaries decided that they would go to Colombia and they would stay in Colombia despite the violence, despite the danger, despite the war that was gauging on around them to share the good news. Back in the 80s, uh, missionaries from CMML came down. Uh, one of them is Jim Fleming, and uh, he began to share the gospel in Colombia, Bogota. That's where I was born. Uh, I came to the assemblies. I grew there. And within there, uh, I came to know the Lord and to know Him. Uh, the movement began in the 70s, late 80s. And in the last 30 years, it's grown to be about 20 or 22 assemblies in the city of Bogota, which you're watching on the video right there. Very different context. This is more of an urban context. Bogota right now has 8 million people. Uh, it's a big city. Uh, there's uh, tons of traffic, uh, tons of people living there, but a great, great need. And I am very thankful for those people who were brave enough uh, to go there, to stay there, and to preach the good news, and who were witnesses of a great harvest uh, in our country and in our city. Uh, in the last uh, years, as the assemblies have grown, uh, their needs have changed. Uh, we've seen new assemblies getting established, a lot of first-generation believers that have come to the faith. And as that gets grown, then we have very different needs. Uh, in the last uh, six years, I have been working as a missionary in Colombia. By the grace of God, I was able to come to the States, uh, study in Dallas at DTS, uh, met with the brothers at Evans Lane Bible Chapel here in Louisville. And by the end of my time uh, in Dallas, uh, the big question came, what was I going to do after I finished my studies? Things were going very good here. We were engaged in kids' ministries uh, in uh, Edmonds Lane. Uh, things were going great with the young people. Uh, we thought there's a lot of needs here. Our assembly uh, really indeed loved us, and they wanted us to stay behind. And we were faced with a very difficult, very difficult choice. How do you choose between good and good? How do you choose between uh, staying in a place that you love and going to the place that you know God wants you to, to be. Uh, between choosing good ministry here or good ministry there in Colombia. And we had to pray over a year, asking the Lord for guidance, asking Him, where do you want us to go? Because we want to serve you. And as Micah was saying, we know the mission field is everywhere. And whether we're staying here in Dallas or whether you're sending us back to Colombia, we want to serve you with all of our hearts and all of our lives. But where do you want us to go? After a year of praying among with, uh, along with our elders in the assembly, uh, by the end of that year, our elders came back to us and they said, we love you, we want you to stay, we, that would be the greatest thing for us, but we clearly see that it is the Lord's will for you to go back to Bogota. And that's where we started uh, working on Fiel Bible Institute. You see, all my years at DTS, while I was going through classes, uh, every class that I sat on, I would go back home weeping of joy, uh, realizing how much I was learning of the Scripture, how much I was getting poured on of the Word, but always thinking about many more men back in Bogota 
that had a love for Scripture, a passion for the Word, but they had no way to study Scripture in this way that I was getting it. And I always had a heavy burden for that and always thought, why can't we have this in Bogota? And I asked the Lord that question, why can't they have this? Now, be careful. When you ask the Lord a question like that, why can't they have this? He might answer, well, that's a good question, Christian. Why don't you take charge of that? And the Lord put that on my heart. Uh, we went back to uh, Colombia almost six years ago, and we've been working there on creating uh, Field Bible Institute. And I want to share a few things to you, not just about the Institute, but about the work of the assemblies in Bogota, which I think you might find encouraging. It is a ministry in a, an urban context, that's for sure. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, almost 8 million people. That means it's overpopulated. Everybody is always very busy. There's traffic all over. It can take you an hour and a half to get everywhere you want to go. And uh, as a big city brings about the busyness of everybody. We do have bivocational ministry. So as you know, most of the people that will want to work in the assembly, that want to help out, are not people that can dedicate their whole lives to ministry or that can be supported for that. So they have a job, they have families, uh, they have other occupations, and they serve the Lord. Now, the big deal is they want to be educated. There is a real need for them because they want to, uh, to know more the Lord. And we realized there was a decrease on the church planting. Uh, we had seen one or two assemblies being planted every year when the movement began, and the, which was great. All of them new believers. Uh, but then we saw the rate began to decrease. One of the main reasons for that was the lack of leadership. Uh, we didn't have enough leaders, men, who were equipped with the Word of God, who were ready to discern Scripture, to expound the Scripture, to plant new assemblies. And the present leadership that we had would tell us, well, we still need further training. We don't know how to be elders. We don't know how to counsel. Uh, we, we wish to know how to study Scripture better. Uh, that's how the Lord uh, guided the brother... Um, and myself to work on this project of uh, online education. Now, when I say online, please don't think about YouTube video and then just watching a bunch of YouTube videos. Uh, there's a bunch of things that happen here. Uh, number one, uh, we work with the current leaders. Uh, we made a point of this, and this is something I love about the assembly work in Bogota. The assemblies in Bogota work really well together. They are a team. Uh, and we have 22 assemblies in Bogota. And here are some of the things that they do that I love and that I want to see replicated in other places. The elders of those 22 assemblies meet together once a month. They meet together once a month and they get together to pray for the different assemblies need and to discuss how can they can help each other and what projects are there that they can do to spread the gospel further. So they're not competing with one another. They're not fighting with one another. They're working together to be able to spread the gospel further. Uh, so we were able to get with them and work with them and tell them, what do you need? What are the main needs that you have as leaders and elders? And that's where our program began. Just what does the assembly need and how can we cater to them? Uh, we have to consider the culture that we're working on. They have that limitation of people being busy, of transportation being so difficult around the city. And uh, at the same time, you know, we have to help relate the Bible theory to the practice. And that's what we've been working really hard on. The elders would tell us, we don't want people to come back to the assembly with their heads big and full of theology and sit down in a chair and then judge everything that we do. We need people to learn scripture, go to their hearts, and be able to use their hands and their feet to serve in the assembly. So that's what we've been focusing as we've done uh, the, the courses. And of course, we want to provide good biblical formation. It's amazing how we take it for granted as we have English as a language that we understand and how much great teaching you, you have. I'm surprised by the Indian Brethren community for that. How many really good Bible teachers you have available? That's a great blessing. 
A great blessing that I have from being in this community is hearing of people that have a third generation, fourth generation believer that their grandparents or their great grandparents were serving the Lord with all their hearts. And for me, that's incredible. I'm a first generation believer. 95% of the people I know in Colombia are first generation believers. So we are just starting. We're just getting started on the way to spreading the gospel in our country. But it's encouraging for me to see that it has been going on for so many years. But we lack. We lack the teachers. We lack the training. And that's what hopefully we're helping to provide. Uh, helping the churches to communicate with one another and to keep using them. Now, one of the biggest um, verses that has been a burden in our hearts lately has been Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. It says, To equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And that is our goal. Uh, the gospel has been brought to Colombia, thankfully, by missionaries who remained there. Colombia is at peace right now. The violence is gone. Uh, the doors are wide open. And the church needs to take this opportunity to spread the gospel even further. Uh, the gospel has been focused in the main cities. It hasn't gone out as much to the jungle. It hasn't gone out as much to the small towns because of the violence that used to be there. But now that that's gone, as a movement, as assemblies in Colombia, we need to move out. We need to spread the gospel out. And that's where we want to focus. We want to be able to train Colombians, to encourage them, to be able to go out and spread the gospel everywhere. So that other people might say of them what we have said of the missionaries, how beautiful are the feet of those who share the good news. Now I'd like to give a reminder also of what Micah just said. Not only the people that have gone to Colombia have beautiful feet. All of you right here have beautiful feet. Maybe that's why we take our shoes when we get home, to display our beautiful feet. Because you are able to share the good news with others. Like I said, we've been very blessed by missionaries from CMML. And I'd just like to take one minute to remind you there's a CMML stand right here in the back. There's some really, really useful tools that are completely free and that we would love for you to bring home with you. There's a missionary prayer handbook. Every single missionary that's been sent by the assemblies through CMML is right here. And if you want to pray for the nations, if you want to be involved, if you want to, your children to know what God is doing around the world, this is a great way to do it. Every day there's different missionaries. You can open the handbook to the day of the month. You'll find missionaries that you can pray for that are all around the world. We also get this uh, missions magazine, really great articles going on here. And um, you can get it for free. There's a free subscription slip also in the back. And you can get free subscription, great articles, and also be informed about missions. And finally, there's this little pamphlet, the Missions Pathway. Uh, great information if you're interested in missions or you have people or young people in your assembly that might be interested. This is great information for them. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your interest. God is at work in South America. There is much work to do. And I pray that God will send more beautiful feet to spread the good news and help us with the work.